Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here from Storage Review. We're back in the lab today getting this QNAP TS1685 set up for a review we're about to do on these WD Red NAS hard drives. You can see these guys on top too. We're going to be using the SSDs. These are the WD Red SSDs that are designed for NAS workloads. Now we already did a review of these guys and found that their read performance was really pretty fantastic in such an inexpensive package. We're going to put them in the four two and a half inch bays in this system and we're going to be accelerating the 14 terabyte NAS hard drives behind. Now you might think about flash in a NAS as something that's not needed or perhaps a bit extravagant and we're really not finding that to be the case, especially with more and more workloads being driven by these higher power systems and the fact that we've got 10 gig on the back end really means that we can take advantage of the flash. And we can do that primarily as a cache or a tier, which is the most common way. But if you've got some high performance need for a particular set of files, you can make a flash pool also in the QNAP system. So we're going to load these up. Again, these are the standard issue WD Reds. They do have a pro model as well. The difference really is in reliability and scalability. WD mostly wants to see the regular models go into smaller NAS for Soho or remote office up to eight bays. We're gonna cheat a little bit here with this 12 bay system, but we like to live on the edge. Now the Pro model adds in a couple extra features for reliability and is designed for larger NASs up to 24 bays. We don't have those guys in yet, but we hope to soon, and we'll be able to performance test them as well to see how they line up. So what we're going to do is load these guys up now and see uh, what it looks like once we get into the QNAP system. All right, so we're going to get these drives loaded up. I like starting with the SSDs just because the trays are just so darn easy to use. They just sort of flex bend in there, snap in, and we're ready to go. If only every drive load was that easy and that fast, lab life would be a lot easier. So now we transition to the three and a half inch drives and it's not like they're terribly complicated. They've got two little clips on the side. Make sure your SATA port's facing out. We've all made that mistake before. And clip these guys back in. And off you go. We're gonna keep going. All right, all of our drives are loaded. Now we're gonna power this thing on and get the 1685 testing these WD Reds. Our NAS has come back online, which is a good start, and we used the uh, QFinder to get the IP address of it, and we've typed that in, and now we'll log into the system. And we're just gonna start by making sure everything came online, all the drives are being seen. Uh, so we like to start with the basics. We'll go into storage and snapshots, take a look, skip this little guy, and we see the devices are there. Loading into disks and the uh, JBOD screen. And this is where if we had any problems, we would see an alert, but looks like all of our disks have come online. Everyone looks good and happy, which is a great starting point. And so now what we'll do is go ahead and move into the storage setting here. Of course, there's no volumes or pools created because we just put them in for the first time and powered it on. So we'll go ahead and create that. 
here is actually where we can take the first advantage of and easiest advantage of the flash inside and just click on enabling queues here. That's QNAP's auto tiering function and that's a set it and forget it uh, kind of switch. We're going to skip that for now. In fact, what we're going to do is just select eight of the hard drives and put them into a, a pool with each other. The reason we're doing that is because the comps we use in our hard drive reviews that get tested in a NAS have all been groups of eight. That's been sort of an arbitrary number uh, that we started out with, but it's been backed up with like WD's marketing of the red. They want to see those in smaller NASs up to eight and the red pro and larger NASs. So we sort of over time have set that eight number as the ideal target for this testing. Once we're done with that, we'll come back through, enable the flash, enable the other four disks, and see what we can do in a very large pool with that four terabytes of, of flash in front. We're going to select RAID 6 for this effort. Of course, there are plenty of other options, should you so choose, and then hit Next. We can set a uh, alert threshold for capacity. We'll just leave that at the default. And then we get a summary of what this thing's going to do. It's going to create a new RAID group, eight disks, RAID 6, the disks that are selected, the alert that we have set up, and the, uh, the space allocations. So we'll go ahead and hit Create. We'll confirm that we're going to lose our data, which is OK, because there's nothing on it anyway. And then it's going to uh, get to work. And this will take a few minutes, as it says. It'll work in the background, but that'll get us to the point where we can uh, present the storage to our load gen servers and get testing. So that's our plan. We'll get to work on that and report back with the results as soon as we can.